Good morning, my friends. My name is Monique. People know me as the Overland Lady, the girl who toured around Australia in a Toyota Land Cruiser Hundred Series named Elta, and brought the right-hand drive to Canada, exploring the beauty in North America. After an accident in the Arctic ended a journey with Elta, I imported a Hilux, attempting to build a home again. But things just don't feel quite the same. So here we are with another Hundred Series, back to where we started. It's been a whirlwind of a journey. Thank you for being with me, and I can't wait to share more with you all. So remember to like and subscribe. It may not be morning time wherever you are, but I say good morning just because it feels a lot more refreshing than hello. First start, let's do this. It's kind of sad that I never had a full walk around of Altar because I kept. Thinking, oh, this is not the final stage. It was only one simple setup video that Going to Adventure did on me a couple years back. But since that video, I've gotten a lot more different upgrade, both mechanically and overland side of things, camping side of things. Anyways, so I thought <laughs> you probably don't have to wait for that imaginary perfect moment, even though the setup in this was done basically just within a week of time. I will say though, most of the mechanical things were not an upgrade. I've only fixed them up to be drivable since the original idea was just a commuter. But as a Land Cruiser, it, it's enough to do most of what I do. Forest road, camping, I'll show you the setup. So I'm going to mention mostly just what I did. Um, the vehicle came with a bumper, front and rear and a steel cable winch. When I got to see the vehicle, there are marks on the fender, outlining, showing that before it's got fender flare at some point, but the flares weren't there. And I thought it's only fair to put the flares back on, sort of cover the mark and try a different style. But with the fender flare, you kind of need wider footprint. For the first time, I did change my wheels. These are SSW off-road wheels. They're supposed to be polished silver, but right now it's just covered in dust. I will tag a couple photos to make it look nicer. The roof set up. This is not a platform. It was actually from Alta. When I just got Alta, it came with heavy duty Rhino Rack crossbars and a basket on top. And I thought, oh, I would just use the crossbar so I can mount an awning on it, just like before. And some simple stuff that I can put on. And after I put a mount on, I looked at the crossbar. I'm like, huh, where are my legs? looked around everywhere and couldn't find it so here's a huge shout out to modular rack they're located in south surrey i called them up right away i've known of them for a very long time but since i've always had a full rack and platform set up i never really needed to contact them for any help except this time when time comes around i quickly messaged them asking if they can source this leg for me or figure out how to mount the crossbars and they were able to quickly look it up for me and ordered in the last set available because these legs were actually discontinued if you think about it Elta was an 05 vehicle and I don't know when the owners got them. They were products from the early 2000s so and Rhino Rack has been upgrading a lot over the years so props to them for helping me and I can reuse my crossbars and the awning it is no longer 270 unfortunately I so here's why I need to slap my face for the longest time I kept critiquing why would anybody need 180 awning you just swing all the way backwards so you cover your trunk area until I had a spoiler that flips all the way up and it will not accommodate a 270 that swings to the back. So here I am using an 180. I've actually never set it up. After installing it right in front of Modular Rack's shop, we did open it up to take all the cardboards out, but I didn't set up and tensioning it. So this will be the first time that we get this done. So let's see how it looks.
fresh render rack legs, modular rack sorted for me. And my crossbar, you can see the age, the logo is even worn out. And my anchors also showed some ages, but everything worked perfectly fine. Rhino Rock's definitely a keeper. You never know when you get to use them again. So this guy has got front bumper and rear bumper. We don't have a slight step, so I can't really, you know, reach the roof without opening the door. Why would you do that? Why would anybody do that? Since we're on the roof, I just wanted to show you this tiny DIY thing that I did. Because we're using crossbars now, I can't really mount the Max trucks on without some extra work. I still have my Rhino Rack Max truck mount from the Pioneer. So basically I just need to figure out how much distance are these mounting holes. And I made a plate, drilled holes on the plate of where the crossbars align. And because the heavy duty bars are basically unistruts, you can use spring nuts or the channel nuts that Rhino Rack always uses. I just slide in some spring nuts and then bolt to the plate into it. There is one little thing because I only use one eighth aluminium, so it kind of like bent and flexes a little bit and it makes noises where the studs in the bottom in here kind of contact the baseboard, the metal. So I put in some foam tape at where the studs are so that they don't make noises anymore. As for the rear bar, I would still like to have a shovel on there. This is Rhino Rack's Stow It Kit. I love how everything, even though the Rhino Rack Stow It Kit came with adapters for the Pioneer platform and that's what I used to begin with. All I needed to do was to change the bolt and a channel nut to make it fit the heavy duty bar. Everything just directly adapt to whatever application you need. Pretty happy about this quick little recycling. Recycling? Is that what you call it? Using your old items that weren't really in service. It's like donating your clothes, except you're donating to your next vehicle from your last vehicle. I don't know if I'm making any sense. But the whole idea of this car was just to make it all right for camping and not try not to spend too much money on it because I'm not keeping it. It's not the right platform, not the right fuel consumption. <laughs> it's not Alta, basically. The only thing I basically acquired new was those awnings because of the stupid spoiler. The sleep platform adapted from Ironman 4x4 drawers. These are actually for a truck bed so they are slightly longer. Um, I will have to take my second row seats out in order to fit them because they take half of second row seat space. But this also means I get more of a drawer space. They go so much deeper and I think they're slightly taller too because I do feel like my fridge now is closer to the roof and they're really nice comparing to the drawers I had before. These kind of handle, it's a lot more sturdy. And this one is my gear and tool bins, um, all of my sockets and tools and extra pegs. Camp lights, tapes, they're always good to have. Fire starting things and hand cream. Just a bunch of things that you probably should keep it in the car just in case. Not to mention you can lock them. Here's a key. And I don't remember where I put the key. So I'm not going to lock them. And then this one is my food drawer. All of the dry goods, my pots, my pans, my air fryer fits in here too now, but I have to make it sideways. My egg cooker, cereal, BCIs, all that kind of things. And the fridge is now on an Ironman fridge slide. Um, there's one thing though, it does fit my ARB 47 liter fridge, maybe without the insulation sleeve. So right now it's actually sitting on top of the grid instead of inside the grid. But once I strap it down, it's fine. It still doesn't move. It's got a pretty nice 
locking mechanism here. You can stop it here, or you can stop it all the way out. It's pretty steady. However, I probably shouldn't have gotten the drop down slide because see how tall it is? I still do need to climb up here, but more importantly, I have a hatch on top. The fridge can't really open fully which makes taking things out a little difficult. And since I don't have the side wing kit for the 100 series with these doors, I have to make something myself. These are made out of 3 16 aluminum wrapped in the same color carpet. They're just black, so a lot easier to match the color. I had a thought of maybe making this a door that opens, but after thinking for a while, if I use this as a flip up, then maybe this should just be a fixed panel that supports the flip to, you know, as a, as a support. On that side, I didn't put a side wing because I kind of want a slide in slide out grid to put my table. Before I will put my table always here, so my table will always leave out outside overnight. But now if I want to, I can fix everything in the car and I don't really need to have anything outside if I am stealth camping. And also it's got space for the essential short people must have. Since I don't have a dual battery set up and the battery that came with this vehicle, I don't think it's even the right size. It looks a little smaller. So I don't know how long the battery will last. Um, I do have my Jackery 2000. The fridge is currently powering off of that and during the daytime I will just charge up the Jackery or since we're sunny right now I can probably top it up tomorrow using solar panel. Just wanted to show you more detail. I got a couple of these tie down hooks that I am still trying to figure out where it's best to put them because these drawers didn't come with tie downs. Um, it's nice that they are black. I do have to use my own screws because the top ply, it's only three eighths. And the screws that it gave me is way too long and it will go through it and potentially puncture what I have inside the jaw. So I changed to a little stubby ones. Um, so the screws are not black, but I have them with me and then I will slowly add them as I see fit. Currently I have these guys to tie down the jackery so it doesn't fly around and this one also tied down a bungee cord all the way to the front neck rest. That is my bed folded over. I believe you guys have all seen uh, how I usually fold my bed out and then up when I'm driving. The side wings, I made them into two pieces because one big flap is just way too big. Basically just eyeball to where the wheel well comes up the highest and make that the splitting point of the front piece and the back piece. Try to trim this along the body shape. One note about those excessive amount of patches on my roof. They are actually Velcros to secure my string lights. In Alta, I had a storage net on the roof. So I would just run my string lights around that net thing. But I didn't have one here since it got tumbled and stretched during the rollover. I don't know if it's like too bright yet to turn it on. Well, you can probably see a little bit. You see? How cute is that? Okay, let's turn all of them on. And then so you can see how cute the vibe just all of a sudden becomes. I have more there. And now thinking about it, I probably should have um, run all of them to start here or just have one very long one instead of a bunch of shorter one. And they each have a separated, separate switch. If I can just have one and have them run all over, it would be a lot easier. But just one creative way to use patches. I do still have patches for sale, even though these, the, that, this is a lot of my patches. I don't have a lot left. Um, if you want one, if you want to run your own, or I know a lot of you guys already have a bunch of patches on your roof, this is something you could do. It's really cute at night. Maybe I'll leave them on. And this is the driver's side rear seat. I got my solar panel, clothes bag, recovery gear. And these are the same panels that I made for Alta. They flip up from 
where the jaw ends. This is the passenger side rear seats. I have my buddy heater down there, camp chair inside the channels, my bed folded, my water jug and everything is in the passenger front seat. Water, I will tilt that down when I'm using it so the hose will just run it like running water. My camera gear sitting right beside me. This little black hoop is a really cool thing. I'll show you how it works. Since I'm holding the camera, I'll try to one hand operate this. This is something I found on Amazon. It is a hat holder. It looks like this kind of shape. Usually you're supposed, normally you're supposed to hook it backwards and have it have the U shape overhang in the back of the seat for your hat. But since my back is cramped with my bed and things, there's not much space, so I put it forward. This hook will hook onto your headrest leg. And now you have a perfect circle for your Kuba. Let me see if I can get it in one-handed. How cool is that? No more cramping your hat with everything dumbling around, bumping around inside a vehicle. It's got a dedicated spot, especially in the passenger side, right beside my driver's side. I love it. I'll leave a link down below. Good stuff for your car. Couple bucks. Full disclaimer, Rhino Rack did reach out to me one night, just got this new Honda series. I have the option to basically get another Pioneer platform for this one to achieve the same setup. I said no because I didn't want to set this one up because I didn't want to keep it. Anyways, I still got a crossbar and I'm thinking if I'm not keeping it full on, it doesn't make sense to invest so much into a vehicle. So the crossbar works perfectly fine. So if you're thinking about mounting something, oh, this mozzies. If you're thinking about mounting something and Pioneer platform is out of your budget, crossbars in most cases works perfectly fine. Ah, oh, mozzies already. Wow. Oh, okay. I will probably set up a fire so the bugs will stay away from me. Oh, if you haven't noticed, this shirt is on my store. It's a full size t shirt, but I always crop them. Overlandbape.com. That's where you can get it in memory of Elta. I miss that guy. Need wider footprints to make your stance look good, you know? And so, 